G'day guys, how are you? Hope you're all having a fantastic evening, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. I'm going to be doing a review. Now I did this review a bit earlier today, but I had to delete it. Now the reason is because I kind of, before I reviewed this film, I defended myself against something that I won't go into. And some psycho basically came on and completely tore me to shreds. Now I didn't attack him, I just defended myself, and yet that hit a nerve with him. So very very bizarre behavior and I thought you know instead of having a video up there with hateful remarks uh, I decided you know I'm going to do a completely new one and I'm not even going to bother saying what I had to say before because obviously people don't like it when you try and defend your name so um, I'm not going to do it so the review that I did earlier and I'm going to be doing again is of a French film it's not a horror film it's more of a psychological drama. So for all of you people out there who don't like horror, this one should appeal to you. And hopefully all the horror fans out there will still find this film interesting enough because it is quite a disturbing film. It was made in 2001, directed by Catherine Brelé. It's a French film, French language, English subtitles. And this one is called For My Sister. Now I'm not even going to attempt at the French title. Well, actually I will. Amar Soy. Can't pronounce... French at all, so that's my best effort. I apologise if I completely butchered it. The other name for it is Fat, which is a very harsh title, but it's more of a relevant title to the film, so I think that is one that really explains it a lot better than For My Sister. But for this edition, they've gone For My Sister. Now, I don't have, I don't own this film. I rented this from my local video store, so I'm not sure how easy it is to purchase. But anyway, the story is as follows. For My Sister is a provocative and shocking drama about sibling rivalry, family discord and relationships. Elena is 15, beautiful and flirtatious. Her less confident sister, Anne, is 12 and constantly eats. On holiday, Elena meets a young Italian student who is determined to seduce her. Anne is forced to watch in silence, conspiring with the lovers but harbouring jealousy and similar desires. Their actions, however, have unforeseen tragic consequences for the whole family. So what we have are two sisters, one is 15, named Elena, and Anne is age 12. And they're on the family holiday, they've gone to their family holiday retreat in the countryside. And here is where you really get to know about the sisters. There's not too much that is known about the parents, but the sisters are the main point of the film. Now Elena is beautiful and she is very, very confident. She's 15 years old, but she has vulnerabilities coming from her age. And then you've got Anne, who is 12 years old, who is overweight, and she has a very low self-esteem. And she copes with her problems by eating. And she really does look up to Elena. And she sees Elena as a very mature person. But that is all false because, you know, she has a lot of learning to do herself. But she portrays herself as a mothering figure for her younger sister. Because, as I said, the parents are really cold. And they don't really uh, mingle with the, the children very well. So Anae's role model is her um, sister who is only two years older than her. So they're on this family retreat. They're bickering between each other. They're having conversations that I'm not going to go into. But they're very insightful and they paint a real picture. So Elena ends up coming across this Italian man. Now this man is a lot older than her. He's not um, an adult. or oh, he's an adult. He's a very young adult. And he is more experienced in the world than Elena. And Elena finds him very attractive and she finds it, um, you know, that if she can be with this guy, then uh, all her problems will go away. So she ends up seeing this Italian guy and this Italian guy is basically preying upon her. Now, she sees uh, the situation as falling in love, whereas the Italian guy is seeing it more as self-gratification, um, to have sex with this girl under the false impression that they're falling in love. So he really is using her. And along the way, uh, they, they're having encounters in the secrecy. Uh, the, only th the only other person that knows is the younger sister, who is in the same room while these encounters are happening, which is very, very disturbing. But uh, it's being kept a secret from the parents. And eventually the parents do find out and things go from bad to worse for the two girls for keeping this a secret. And then at the end is very, very devastating. And throughout the film, the younger girl wants to lose her virginity as well because she wants to emulate everything that her older sister is doing. So she wants to lose her virginity to someone that she loves. She ends up losing it, but to someone who she'd never expect to lose it to. And it's quite horrific and it is quite disturbing as well. So I'm not going to give that away. It's something you're going to have to watch the film to see for yourself. But that's the basic synopsis. It's a tale about love between family members and love um, in the different sense with this boy. 
So that's as far as I'm going to go with the story. If you want to know more, please go and see the film for yourself. Now my thoughts on the film. This is a very ugly film. It's a very good film, but it is very ugly. There is no glorifying anything in the film, and there is nothing about this film that's going to make you feel good. It is very, very uncomfortable and awkward, and it deals... The main subject of this is innocence, uh, which, you know, the, the innocence of virginity, not knowing how the world works, and having that innocence of virginity taken advantage by someone who is there for different sort of motives, and how easily this young girl is manipulated um, is beyond belief, you know. Some of the things that this guy tells her is absolutely repulsive, and you can see that he is only after one thing, but the tragedy is that Elena thinks that he genuinely loves her. And that's, this is a very real sort of occurrence in everyday life, is that, you know, young people, when they think they know more than they do, they think they know the world, and they think they're in for something. They go into something um, thinking is a lot different to what it actually is, and this is a, a prime example of that. Now, the sex is quite graphic. It's not hardcore, but the director of this film has been accused of borderline child pornography, which I think is a little bit unfair. It is not child pornography. It's a very taboo subject. It deals with, as I said, the loss of innocence as a result of losing your virginity. Very touchy sort of subject, and it's a film that only a brave filmmaker would make. And I think Catherine Belay did a very good job, and I respect her a lot because she took the... Um, she knew that this film would be frowned upon by a lot of people, but that didn't stop her because she wanted to make a very real film, and that's exactly what she did with this one. It is very real, but it is highly disturbing. Now, it's painfully slow in some parts, so for those of you with low attention spans, you're definitely not going to like this one because it does move very slow. It is very psychological, and it's an insight into uh, teenage years and the immaturity that those years bring us. So it is, as I said, an insight into a family, into the... Uh, sibling sort of love-hate relationships between them and relationships between young um, um, teenagers. And as I said, how the uh, predators prey upon the vulnerable. Now, at the end, it's very shocking. It goes against what most of the film is about. Uh, most of the film is basically a, a love sort of psychological drama. And then it gets a little bit um, harsh towards the end. So I actually thought it was a good payoff. The ending was a little bit abrupt. It kind of a very, very slow build up throughout the entire film, and that very abrupt ending, I would have liked it to have been dragged out just a little bit more. But having said that, you know, it is a very good film, but it's definitely a film I'll only be watching once. The direction was great, there is um, touches of noir cinema. Now, noir cinema is very, very unique and it has its own style, and a lot of the camera shots in this film, the cinematography, really reminded me of the noir films, especially the French noir. Now, bright colours, but then there's also dull colours that match the specific moods in the in the scenes. And the acting was great. Now, the acting, especially from the 12-year-old, now, apparently these actresses, they were older than what they portrayed, but they were still young, and they did a fantastic job, especially Elena, who was played by Roxanne Mesquita, who was off other films such as uh, Satan. You could maybe recognise her there. She did a really good job, but I think she portrays the same character a little bit too much. Someone who's a little bit ignorant, and um, but has a brooding sort of intensity. And you know, I'd like to see her portray some different sort of characters, but she is good at playing this particular sort of character. So, But the acting, as I said, is from the character who's supposed to be 12. She did a very, very good job. I don't know how old she was in, in reality, but she does appear very young, and there are some scenes that are very uncomfortable, and I can understand people having a problem with that because, uh, yeah, it is very, very controversial, And uh, but I do applaud, as I said, the filmmaker for doing this kind of thing and making provocative cinema. Now, what else can I say? Though The dialogue is, uh, it relies strongly on its dialogue, and thankfully the dialogue is very strong. It's a film that you're going to have to concentrate from start to finish. So definitely go into this one being warned. It is not a film for everyone, but if you're a fan of extreme sort of cinema, and not extreme as far as violence goes, but extreme as far as sexuality goes, then I definitely suggest you go out there and get this one. As I said, not sure how easy it is to... Uh, obtain a copy, but if you can track it down, it's definitely worth at least one view. Alright guys, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.